and they put out signature Caitlin Clark balls and other merch that literally sold out within minutes of them going live. Finally, Nike has acknowledged Caitlin Clark as the WNBA's star and is now heavily promoting her across various platforms. Recent backlash has prompted Nike to ramp up Caitlin Clark's promotion, leaving Aja Wilson unhappy about the shift. Some fans still argue that Aja is the league's top player. Asia Wilson, yeah. 28 years old, 1,000 points yeah. in the regular season. Why is that not the biggest story out at the moment? Exactly. Why are we talking about Caitlin Clark? Why, like, exactly. Why, were, why when Asia was releasing a shoe were we talking about Caitlin mm. Clark? Aja Wilson believes she is the main draw and deserves the most promotion. But unfortunately, the stats suggest otherwise in terms of fan engagement. So there's a mindset that Asia has to adopt to justify getting treatment she knows she doesn't deserve. Aja Wilson has been the best player this year, but in terms of marketing, she doesn't resonate as strongly. Caitlin Clark's merchandise sells out instantly, while Aja's products often go unnoticed, highlighting the stark difference in their marketability and fan engagement. Asia Wilson is the best player in the league. Well, she has come out and she has made some more comments and it is like, these players just don't want these new fans, even though the new fans are the ones that drive the, the revenue, plain and simple. Aja Wilson still thinks she can compete with Caitlin Clark, but Nike's promise to promote her more hasn't panned out. As Caitlin continues to shine, it's evident that Aja is struggling to handle the pressure and spotlight. Your play on the court doesn't always equate to how many shoes you will sell. Nike is finally stepping up its promotion of Caitlin Clark, recognizing her as the true star of the WNBA, despite Aja Wilson's attempts to overshadow her. It's a positive move for the brand, showcasing a commitment to Caitlin's talent and marketability. Let's hope Aja doesn't try to sabotage Caitlyn's success again like she did a few weeks ago. It's noise that I don't really listen to, honestly, uh, because I'm in season. I have other things that we need to worry about than what other people have to say. I have a scale. Nike initially backed Aja Wilson as their main representative in the WNBA. However, as Caitlyn Clark's fan base skyrocketed, Nike couldn't ignore her rising popularity. Conversations about Clark flooded social media, sports news, and even reached casual basketball fans who previously overlooked the WNBA. Recognizing that this wasn't just a fleeting trend, but a significant shift in women's basketball, Nike understood the urgency of aligning with Clark to seize a remarkable opportunity and secure their position in the evolving landscape of women's sports. And it led a bunch of these players to get very jealous and petty very quickly. For Aja Wilson, this shift felt like more than just a business decision. It felt like a personal betrayal. Initially, Nike hesitated to make significant moves, having already invested heavily in Wilson as their trusted star. However, as time passed, their reluctance started to fade. Caitlin Clark wasn't merely a talented player, she was spearheading a movement. Young fans, in particular, gravitated toward her, viewing her as a role model. Nike recognized this as a golden opportunity. Young fans are incredibly valuable to a brand like Nike due to their loyalty, frequent merchandise purchases, and their ability to influence peers and family. This was something Aja Wilson simply couldn't offer. Ultimately, it became clear to Nike that supporting Clark aligned with their vision for the future of women's basketball, leading them to pivot their marketing strategy. Somebody coming along and elevating the sport shine ultimately benefits you. Go out there, compete with her, try to bust her up if you want to and all of that stuff. Just don't hate on the acclaim that she's getting. As Caitlin Clark's popularity soared, Nike had to confront the undeniable truth. She was rapidly becoming one of the most marketable athletes in women's sports. While her on-court performance played a significant role in this rise, Nike recognized that her appeal extended far beyond traditional basketball fans. Clark became a household name, sparking conversations in various circles, which made her crossover appeal exceptionally valuable for the brand. This realization prompted Nike to fully invest in promoting her as the face of the WNBA. We saw the jersey sales numbers. We didn't actually see the actual numbers, but we saw the top jersey sales in the WNBA this season. And Asia, despite being a third-time MVP, 
Her jersey sales were fifth in the league even after Kate Martin, who barely saw the court the second half of this season. This was a turning point for Nike. They recognized the need to adapt their strategy as Caitlin Clark was bringing in new fans, attracting diverse demographics, and generating an excitement that was difficult to replicate. When Nike spots a rising star like Clark, they know it's time to make a strategic move. Thus, they began shifting their promotional efforts toward her, a decision that understandably didn't sit well with Asia Wilson. Wilson couldn't shake the feeling of jealousy regarding Clark's rapid ascent. It wasn't just about the increased attention Clark was receiving. Wilson believed she had rightfully earned the spotlight, only to see it seemingly snatched away. She's the Tim Duncan of the WNBA. Doesn't sell shoes, doesn't drive TV ratings. That's not what he does. That's who Aja Wilson is, but she has to adopt this mi mindset of, I'm owed this and you white girls need to back your ass up while I get what's owed to me. It, it's all just a, it's endless reparation. To Wilson, it felt like Caitlin Clark hadn't faced the same struggles and challenges that she had endured. Wilson alluded to this in her public comments, implying that Clark's meteoric rise stemmed from factors beyond mere basketball talent. This public back and forth began to affect Wilson's image. Previously viewed as a humble and hardworking star who let her performance do the talking, her remarks about Clark now came off as bitter and resentful. Fans who had once rallied behind her began to question whether Wilson could handle the pressure of sharing the spotlight with another emerging star. This shift in perception wasn't favorable for Wilson. Caitlin Clark's rise to stardom transcended her basketball skills. It was her unique ability to connect with fans that set her apart. Audiences saw something special in Clark that went beyond just the game. She was relatable, charismatic, and most importantly, thrilling to watch. Each time she stepped onto the court, an air of anticipation surrounded her as fans sensed that something magical could unfold at any moment, compelling them to tune in game after game. This strong connection Clark built with her fans was pivotal to her marketability. People didn't just want to watch her play, they wanted to be part of her journey. They sought out her jerseys, followed her on social media, and looked for ways to support her. This kind of unwavering fan loyalty is exceedingly rare, and it captures the attention of major brands like Nike. Nike recognized that tapping into Clark's fan base could yield substantial returns, making her a valuable asset for their marketing strategy. Is Asia Wilson currently the best player in the WNBA? Yes. Is Caitlin Clark currently the face of the WNBA? Yes. Do I think if Asia Wilson dropped a shoe and Caitlin Clark dropped a shoe today at the very same time that Caitlin Clark would outsell Asia's shoe by a hundred times? Yes, I think that would be the case. Nike began releasing products associated with Caitlin Clark, and the response was nothing short of phenomenal. Jerseys emblazoned with her name were flying off the shelves, and even simple merchandise like posters and t-shirts quickly sold out. Fans were clearly enamored with Clark, and Nike recognized this as a significant business opportunity that they couldn't afford to ignore. The true game-changer, however, was the anticipation surrounding Clark's custom shoe. Fans had eagerly awaited this moment, and when Nike hinted at developing a shoe with her name, excitement surged to new heights. It was widely acknowledged that once the shoe was officially launched, it would sell out within minutes. Clark's dedicated and passionate fan base was poised to support her at every turn, ready to purchase anything with her name attached. For Asia Wilson, this stark comparison was challenging. When Nike released her signature shoe, the reaction fell short of the expectations set by Clark's fervent following. While Wilson had a loyal fan base, it didn't match the same level of enthusiasm or engagement that Clark had cultivated. Wilson's merchandise sales were steady, but nowhere near the sellout numbers that Clark was generating. This disparity was a pivotal factor in Nike's decision to shift their promotional focus. It wasn't personal, it was simply a business move driven by market dynamics. Y'all stop being petty, stop being catty, cause she like a double-edged sword. She couldn't tell left and right, and it's bothering y'all, and I see it. 
Let's go, Caitlin. Hey, do me a favor, CC. Send your, boy, send your favorite off a jersey with your autograph on it, and I wear it. This kind of commercial success is what brands dream of, which is why Nike could no longer ignore Caitlin Clark. They recognize that ramping up their promotion of her would translate into larger sales and increased brand visibility, key factors that ultimately drove their decision. For Aja Wilson, this shift was a tough pill to swallow. Despite her remarkable achievements on the court, her merchandise sales simply couldn't compete with Clark's, and in the cutthroat world of sports marketing, that disparity is what truly matters. Nike's decision to pivot their focus from Wilson to Clark wasn't made lightly. It stemmed from meticulous analysis and strategic planning. As one of the largest brands globally, Nike doesn't make hasty decisions. They had maintained a strong relationship with Wilson for years, but when they recognized the meteoric rise of Clark, it became clear that this was an opportunity they could not let slip by. Although players like Angel Reese publicly backed Wilson, the reality remained. Caitlin Clark had emerged as the primary star for Nike, forcing Wilson to take a step back. This transition underscores the harsh realities of sports marketing, where commercial viability often outweighs personal loyalty. What do you think about her shoe? Sorry. I love her shoe. Yeah. I'm so happy for her. I mean, she's deserved it. Yeah. Um, Asia has been somebody that's inspired me, not just on the court, but off the court. And as a black woman, her story, being from South Carolina and everything behind that. So I'm super happy for her. Um, I wish if I could wear Nike, I would definitely wear her <laughs> shoe. From Nike's perspective, this shift wasn't about choosing one player over another or declaring Caitlin Clark superior to Aja Wilson. It was purely about the numbers. Clark was drawing in more fans, generating more excitement, and ultimately bringing in more revenue. Nike recognized that they had to seize this opportunity, which meant reallocating their promotional resources to support Clark. This was a calculated business decision, plain and simple. However, this transition was anything but easy for Wilson. To her, it felt deeply personal. She had been the face of Nike's WNBA campaigns for years, and now it seemed as if they were moving on without her. Yet from Nike's standpoint, this was the natural evolution of the business. Clark represented the future, and investing in her was essential for the brand's continued growth. Wilson's dissatisfaction was palpable, and it showed in her reactions, highlighting the emotional toll of a rapidly changing landscape. Seriously? The arrogance. Hey, people are going to consume what they want to consume and who they want to consume. Whether you like it or not, and it's not up to Asia Wilson to let anybody do anything. For Aja Wilson, Nike's strategic shift was more than just a business decision. It was a deeply personal moment. She had dedicated herself to building her brand around her relationship with Nike. And when they began to prioritize Caitlin Clark, it felt as if all her hard work was being overlooked. The frustration and hurt were palpable for Wilson. Wilson's partnership with Nike had always been strong. She had represented the brand with pride for years, serving as the face of major campaigns and embracing her leadership role in the WNBA. However, the harsh reality was that her merchandise sales didn't reflect her on-court talent. Despite being a top player, she struggled to translate that success into marketability. In contrast, Caitlin Clark embodied both exceptional athleticism and commercial appeal, making her a dual threat. This stark difference underscored Wilson's struggle. Being an outstanding player doesn't always guarantee stardom, and that's where Clark excelled. She's got one of the hottest selling jerseys in sports, y'all, according to Fanatics, led by the one and only Michael Rubin. Clark's Indiana Fever jersey is apparently sold out in all sizes. It was rumored that she actually outsold Dallas Cowboy jerseys. Caitlin Clark's rise to prominence has created a ripple effect throughout the WNBA, elevating both her career and the entire league. Her ability to attract fans and generate excitement has brought fresh attention to women's basketball, something the WNBA has been striving for over the years. What sets Clark apart isn't just her on-court performance, it's her unique connection with fans and the infectious energy she brings to the game. This captivating presence has drawn in viewers who might not have previously followed the WNBA, marking a significant shift in the league's audience demographics. 
As more fans tune in to watch Clark play, the WNBA finds itself on the cusp of growth and renewed interest, making her impact all the more profound. Her value is felt every place she goes, every arena she goes. TV, you know, ratings, value. Sponsorship deals are also starting to flow in for the WNBA, and much of that is due to Clark's star power. Brands that may not have been interested in partnering with the league before are now eager to get involved, thanks to Clark's popularity. This increased sponsorship interest means more money for the league, which can be used to improve facilities, raise player salaries, and promote the game to a wider audience. Clark's rise is also helping to bring in new fans who are excited about women's basketball. People are starting to see the WNBA as a league filled with talented, exciting players, and that's helping to change the narrative around the sport. Clark's success is proof that there is a huge market for women's sports, and it's helping to push the WNBA forward. And wherever she goes, ratings follow. The WNBA draft, the doubleheader of the open NBA season, ratings, ratings, ratings. Wilson's frustration was evident in her public comments, and she made it clear that she felt like she deserved more recognition. Moving forward, Wilson has to decide how she wants to handle this situation. She can continue to voice her frustrations publicly, or she can focus on her game and find new ways to rebuild her brand. This is a critical moment in Wilson's career, and her next steps will determine how she is perceived in the future. Will she let this situation define her, or will she rise above it and prove that she is still one of the top players in the league? What we know is, Caitlin is a huge star. She's able to back it up on the court whilst also being a major marketing genius, too. This is something Asia needs to accept. So yes, the WNBA was growing before Caitlin Clark. Make that abundantly clear. Mm. But it was growing incrementally compared to the exponential growth you're seeing now. And this is just data, this is just objective facts. Be mad with data, please do not be mad at me. For Asia Wilson, this shift may be frustrating, but for the WNBA as a whole, it's a positive development. Clark's success is opening doors for other players, and it's helping to elevate the league to new heights. It's just unfortunate that some players don't want to see Caitlin's rise and don't recognize what she's doing for the sport. While Wilson may feel sidelined for now, the overall impact of Clark's rise is a win for women's sports. Clark's ability to bring new fans to the game and attract sponsorship deals is helping to push the WNBA forward, and that's something that benefits everyone involved. Hopefully players will recognize Caitlin's effect soon enough. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. More videos are on screen now.